Hey, yo, you're listening to Edge Coach Quip, featuring our very own edge coaches and community, dropping knowledge nuggets to fuel your day. Two, three. <laughs> One, two, I need to, <laughs> I need that. Okay. All right. Hello, everybody. Oh, oh, we were just reading. <laughs> Hello and welcome to episode 117 of Coach Quip. And today's episode is about books. Bing! <laughs> our off-season reading guide. Recommendations from our coaches of, of good reads. Or listens. Or listens, absolutely. And you probably have more time now because it is the off season or maybe you're driving for the holidays. It's a good time to listen or read. And we want to arm you with our favorites and then we probably want to talk with you about them. Yeah, I I love it. I I know. I've always in my mind wanted to do book clubs. Um, I think that we we in the past like have had a a book club club here. Um, I think it's just so fun when multiple people are reading it and you can talk through the concepts. For me, it just sticks so much more. It does stick so much more. And maybe, maybe we'll bring that back. Maybe episode 117 is the, the fire that it reignites it. <laughs> All right. Well, we have recommendations from our coaching staff here of some of their favorite reads. Some of them are related to fitness and training. Some of them totally aren't. And I think this is definitely the time to dig into some of those as well. So we're going to start off with the first one from Coach Katie. This one is called Happy Runner by David and Megan Roach. And I think if, if you're feeling burnt out or like running has become a chore, this is the book for you. Coach Katie says this is a fast read and it has lots of great nuggets on how to keep your love of running alive all the way through your life. Uh, it talks about the mental and emotional factors that the authors say will help you learn to become a happy runner and achieve your personal best. Sounds like a pretty good sell for me. (laughs) And Coach Katie says that the authors are just really positive. It's a great uplifting book. So that would be our first recommendation for our runners out there. All right, next up is Coach Cad, who gave a couple of suggestions. This first one is Better, A Surgeon's Note on Performance by Atul Gawande. So it's not specifically sports related, right? It's written by a doctor, but it uses health and medicine to frame self-improvement and betterment across the industry. And it's really great, I think, this time of year, too, to have kind of a focus on just overall health. Like, how do we improve overall mental and physical health? And that's what one of my recommendations as well focuses on. Um, and really, the summary of the book says it all, which is the struggle to perform well is universal. Each one of us faces fatigue, limited resources, and imperfect abilities in whatever we do. So how do we improve performance holistically? Read this one. Yeah, I love the books that are about running, but not about running, or about training, but not actually about training. I think this is the perfect time because in the off season, we want that refresh, that reset. And if you, you know, if if you find yourself like really missing running and wanting that running fix, then of course, maybe you're drawn to a running book. But Generally speaking, the self-improvement books are a great, this is a great time for them because you can step back. You're still getting better as, a, as, a, as an athlete, but it's not so specifically athlete focused. Right, it's not so heavy. Yeah. All right, the next one up is The Sports Gene by David Epstein. This is also a Coach Cat recommendation. This one, uh, she says, is a fascinating book about nature versus nurture. I've, I've, a lot of friends have recommended that I read this one. I have not yet uh, gotten to it. Uh, it's about high, you know, the, the question of are high performing athletes like our Olympians and Paralympians, are they just sort of, you know, genetically gifted or is it that they are so dedicated to the process and to their training that's what makes them a great athlete? So it has some really interesting information about how athletes develop into the people who they are and why some athletes are more successful than others. So this is Coach Cat's second recommendation. All right, next up, we've got Coach Shauna's picked a book, which is Let Your Mind Run, which is what I was reading when we started this quip um, by Dina Castro. The the full title is A Memoir of Thinking My Way to Victory. Um, Overall, it's just, it's a really wonderfully written memoir. And it's really great to hear her story, as a, especially as a female athlete, because it's extremely relatable. And she also gives some really fantastic, actionable ways for you to gain some mental skills, not just in running and in sport, but truly in life. And she takes you through her many life phases, and each one of them are um, 
individually pretty different, but also very, very relatable. Um, it is a positive book. You know, I'm all about like, I don't need rainbows and, and butterflies, but I want to feel like I have a mental advantage of how to spin something to be positive or powerful. And that really is the nugget of this book. I know that with the Nike Windrunners, they probably pass this book along the most when it comes to, I'm really struggling with my mental game. They will pass over Dina Castor's book to each other. It just keeps floating around. Yeah, I listened to this one on audiobook while I was doing my easy runs and I thought it was incredibly interesting and also motivating to listen to while on the run. Yep. Okay, next up is a recommendation from Coach J. Rowe. This is How Bad Do You Want It by Matt Fitzgerald. This one is a collection of stories from different athletes in a variety of sports and it's another one that's about the power of mindset. So both self-improvement related as well as sports related. It talks about the surprising ways that elite athletes strengthen their mental toughness, which is really, really interesting. A couple of pullouts from this. Um, he has a couple of topic areas that he says he wants to cover. And in the summary, it says that the only way to improve performance is by altering how you perceive effort, which I think is just, you know, a, a whole book. Uh, you know, many books have been written about this idea. And to your point, you know, that idea of how to spin something positive, I think is kind of a through line through a lot of these books. So great time to focus on that. And then the other thing that he says that's really interesting in this book is faith in your training is as important as the training itself. And I think for a lot of our runners who are thinking about self-confidence issues, and um, he says that choking is actually a lack of self-confidence. Oh, I do remember this in this book. Yeah, yeah. 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 So I, I, there are so many good nuggets in this one. Um, we both read it, and Coach J. Rowe recommends How Bad Do You Want It by Matt Fitzgerald. All yeah. right, I've got two recommendations. The first one is Atomic Habits by James Clear. This is one, admittedly, that I used to avoid because I thought it was like atomic, as in like atom bomb, big habits. I thought it was, you know, like trying to eat a whole elephant, right? But in fact, it is, if you look at the cover, you can figure it out pretty quickly. Lots of little points. It's literally atom is in like a very small, tiny particle. And how do you stack them? I... I have probably read this book three times at this point, and I, every time I read it, I get new nuggets. It is by far the most actionable book in terms of trying to change habits that I've ever read. It's also a very easy read. It's very light. It doesn't thump you over the head, but it teaches you how you can shift your momentum by simply stacking things differently. So a, an example, and he, he gives you terms like habit stacking. Mm -hmm. I know that I'm typically out the door way too fast and I don't always hydrate and I always grab coffee. So I will set up a 12 ounce glass right in front of my coffee cup, literally positioned in front of my coffee cup so that I have to drink the water before I fill my coffee cup every morning. And what that means is I'm already better hydrated starting my day than I would have been otherwise, which lends to a whole bunch of other great things happening, more alert. I probably have better workouts. I probably have better hunger cues. And so he, he backs you all the way back to that smallest actionable moment and realize, wow, I don't always need to do all of the things in the order that I was doing them in. If I'm just a little bit more intentional while switching them, it becomes effortless. And that's the magic of the book. Um, the other hot tip on that is if you do not already subscribe to his newsletter, James Clear, if you just look at his website and you, he's got a great Thursday newsletter that comes out, it has some of the best um, quotes and actionable just nuggets that you can have in your inbox every week. I don't subscribe to a lot of monthly mass newsletter or weekly mm -hmm. mass newsletters and his is one that I simply cannot stop reading and I look forward to it every Thursday. I'm glad you added this one because I think it is one of the most actionable, like you said, uh, easy read, loved loved reading it. And also, uh, it's something that you talk about all the time. I feel like if people go back to Coach Robin's past Coach Quip episodes, you'll see little nuggets of this book show up yeah. in a lot of, of, of the work. I think it really, it seems pretty clear that it was really influential in, in your coaching style and your sort of approach to life. It is. It's just made me feel sane. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, just, it gives you power over what can sometimes, sometimes as you navigate life, right? Like that you're just kind of riding these crazy waves and your days are just flowing together. And it gives you some power over how you approach those waves. Yep. 
Next up is my other recommendation, which if you know me, you know that I'm a book pusher, people. I am a book pusher. Um, I love reading more than pretty much any other activity, The Nature Fix by Florence Williams. I, I think I read about, I like to breadcrumb my book, so I'll like read a book and it'll reference another book and then I'll read that book. So I think it was probably in another book that I read. Um, it was written fairly recently, like in the last five to seven years. And it, it's a pretty cool story. Florence Williams, she's a great investigative writer. She moved from Colorado to DC and realized that she lives by an airport now, not as much in nature. There, there certainly is nature around DC, but you have to kind of seek it out more so than where she was living in Colorado. It really started affecting her. And she wanted to know why is that? She looked back and realized that the majority of people, I think it was like 2013, now live in, in the world, now live in urban environments. And what does that do to us, right? Because now we live in much more concrete, much less nature, um, and started looking into the effects really on our immune systems and, and our, sorry, our nervous systems. And our nervous system is really comprised by two main parts, right? Get nerdy, just for a second. <laughs> um, <up. laughs> we got our sympathetic and our parasympathetic system. And that really, we gotta keep those, those puppies in balance because when they get out of balance, that is when things kind of go haywire. Our sympathetic nervous system is really triggered by living in a city, and so that's our fight or flight. Some things we can't control, like loud noises or sirens, um, right, or like big crowds. You could, that's why you get like that energizing feeling. It is that sympathetic response. We, then we have our other side, which is our rest and digest system, or our parasympathetic system, that allows us to kind of restore and reset and become calm. So her whole book is written on how living in an urban environment, can we still have those moments of calm to reset that parasympathetic system strategically? And it is, it's all about the value of getting out there in, into nature, how to do it, you know, whether you're going deep into a forest or you're just going to go and look at some water to boost your physical and mental health. And it is, again, it's really actionable. At the end of the book, she gives a nature pyramid that I think is just so helpful. And it is not a lot of time. It's like one hour a week will get you good for the whole week, right? Um, but it gives you what you should do uh, yearly, quarterly, monthly, and weekly. And it's a very easy way to balance out your nervous system, but honestly, just feel better overall. And it, it all of those inclinations, when people move to um, different environments and they start craving certain things, like going on walks in the middle of the day, it, it gives you all these aha moments of like, oh, my body's, my body's just craving nature. Mm -hmm. This is a great one for our trail to road to trail folks yep. to, to look at too. Also why trail running rules and you should yeah. come out with us on Saturdays, <laughs> DM me. <laughs> And to wrap this list up, I've got two recommendations of my own. The first would be Running While Black by Allison Desir. Uh, Allison is an endurance athlete, activist, and mental health advocate, uh, and a friend of mine, honestly. Uh, I met her in New York when we were running together. And this book is incredible, and it, you know, it came out at the perfect time. And it's about why long distance running for exercise and health has never been truly open to black people. So it's a really interesting deep dive in both history intertwined with her own story. So sort of part memoir, but using personal stories and experiences to really reflect on uh, you know, the state of running for folks who are black. Uh, it advocates for a world where everyone is free to safely experience the life-changing power of movement. Um, and this, I just thought was a really powerful read in terms of talking about different races, different race experiences, and the perspectives of you know, this, this moment in time that we are in right now. So I definitely recommend uh, Running While Black for everybody to read. And then my second recommendation for folks, this is also running related, is Becoming a Sustainable Runner by Tina Muir and Zoe Rom. This one is a, a guide for sustainability in sort of three different areas. It's through personal sustainability as a runner. So like, uh, how can you set up your running career so that you don't burn out, so mm. that you can be a lifelong runner? The second focus of it is about community. So how can you support and engage in your running community locally and nationally? And then the third part is about what we more traditionally think about sustainability in terms of the environment. And so how can races and training be more sustainable for runners? So it's just a, a really great guide of a holistic approach to sustainability in running. I love that. Do you have this one physical? I do have can this I one borrow? physical. Absolutely. We're doing <laughs> Absolutely. a book trade, people. <laughs> 
All right, so this is the time of the year where presumably we have less hours dedicated to running and training, and you can use that time to up your mental game. So we highly recommend that you dive into Nerd Out With Us, dive into those books, and we'd love to see your recommendations. What are your great reads that you would recommend for us to dive into as well? Yeah, I literally will screenshot stories and Same. go back to those screenshots when I know that I am going to be buying a few at a time because I like to buy them used and mm. I have to hit a minimum for the free shipping. <laughs> so please keep doing that and give the reviews, you know, of how you found it. It's really how I like to breadcrumb my, my, my next reads too. I agree. All right. Well, happy reading, everybody. Nerd get, out with us. Yeah, get nerdy. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks for listening to Coach Quip, original music performed by Mend. Follow us online on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Edge Athlete Lounge. Our podcast lives in the blog section of our website. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review this podcast, and you can check out the show notes for additional ways to contact us. Ready, set, onward we go.